find the basis for the subspace V, which is equal to the set of X's in R3 such that AX is equal to 0, where A is this matrix here. Also write down the dimension of V. Well, in order to do the problem, I need to understand the problem. And to understand the problem, I need to know what the words mean. So I need to know what basis means. So let me write down the definition of basis, and then hopefully I'll know what to do. A basis for V is a set of vectors in V which one span V and two are linearly independent. That's the definition of basis. And what does this mean? Well, span means that I can write everything in V as a linear combination of the vectors in the basis. And linearly independent means that none of them is a linear combination of the other. But the definition is uh, that the only solution to the equation a1, v1 up to ar, vr equals zero is that all the a's have to be zero. That's the definition of linearly independent. So how are we actually going to do this for my set of vectors? Let's have a look at what our set is and see if that helps. So it's the set of vectors such that this equation here is true. OK, well, why don't I just solve that equation and then that will tell me what all the vectors in V actually are. And I know how to solve that equation because it's just a matrix. I can just row reduce it and put in all the free variables if there are any and that will give me all the solutions. So, solve AX equals 0. So my matrix is 2, 0, 5, 1, 1, minus a half. Now, I want a column of the identity here, which means I'd want a 1 here. Um, and I can get that by swapping those two rows. But actually, there's already the second column of the identity here. And if I swap the rows, I'm going to destroy that. So I think what I might actually do is divide row 1 by 2, and that will get me a 1 where I want it without destroying the second row of the identity that I already have. So let's see, my new row 1 is a half of row 1. So that would give me 1, 0, 5 over 2, 1, 1 minus a half. OK, so I want my first column of the identity here. I've got my 1 in the right spot. I just need a 0 below it. So I should take off row 1 from row 2. So my new row 2 is row 2 minus row 1. So we haven't changed row 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1 minus a half minus 5 on 2, so that's minus a half, minus 2 and a half, so that would be minus 3. And I've actually finished. I've got as many columns of the identity matrix as I can actually fit there. So it looks like we've got a free variable because I've got the first column of the identity here, the second column of the identity here, and this column here, well, I can't fit any columns of the identity anymore, so that must be a free variable. So we'll let that third one be t, and then I should be able to figure out what the other two are. So let x3 be equal to t. So if we go back here, this one is t. Okay, so let's have a look. This first one tells me x1 plus 5 on 2 t is equal to 0. So x1 is equal to minus 5 on 2 t. So x1 is minus 5 on 2 t. And what about x2? 
So x2 minus 3t is equal to 0, so x2 is equal to 3t. x2 is equal to 3t. So x is equal to x1 is minus 5 on 2t, x2 is 3t, and x3 is t, which is t times minus 5 on 2, 3, 1. Uh, for t in R. I guess I should say that up here. Okay, so now I know what um, all the vectors in V actually are. So V therefore is actually the span of this vector here because I've got all the multiples of that vector and that's what the span is when I've only got one vector. So that vector does span V. All I'd need to do is be sure that it was linear independent uh, in order for it to be a basis, but it's only one vector and it's not the zero vector, so it's certainly um, linearly independent. So it spans V and it's linearly independent. That means it must be a basis. So therefore, the set with minus 5 on 2, 3, 1 is a basis for B. Okay, so have I actually done everything I was supposed to do? I was supposed to find the dimension. Okay, well, the definition of dimension is that it's the number of vectors in a basis. So the dimension of V is the number of basis vectors. So I've only got one basis vector, so therefore dimension of V is 1. And that really is the end of the problem.